ánimo delincuencia. Todo bien aquí. No, pues mándales la suburban. Súbanse a la suburban. Verga, cocho. Amigo, pariente. Man, those years in the Mexican prison, man, I must say that if I wouldn't have been as young as I was, I would have probably never survived. Let's get into this video. Drugs, money, mansions, and private jets. A myth is being created around the narco culture. Narco culture has gone mainstream and can be seen in various areas like music, religion, soap operas, fashion, and language. But it's not all the pretty roses people like to see. Join me as I tell you the truth behind cartel life. This is narco culture. Chis malandros. <laughs> What's up? My name is JC. I am Ron Strong. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss none of my shenanigans. If you're part of my crew, you already know. Get the keys. Subanta la suburban. Let's take this ride because today we're going to talk about party time in Mexican prison. It was intense, dudes. I'm not going to lie. They had some of the most purest drugs there. People from outside would come in to visit inmates just to bite inside the prison instead of bite it outside because it was so pure in there. Man, we partied. We partied. I'm telling you, it's the only four years out of my whole life, my whole life, that I never looked at a calendar. I didn't even know what year it was. I've told the story before that all I remember is uh, like out of a, just a, a crazy memory in my head was I was watching the news in Spanish. You know what? I wasn't even watching. I was buying some fucking coke. <laughs> and I was in the cell with my boss. And it was on the news on his TV and they were shouting, Mataron al Pidismos. Al rapero de Nueva York, lo rapar. And it was, you know, when they killed Biggie Small, so whatever year that was. But I was there and I never looked at time. I never looked at a, 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 a calendar. You know, I was just kind of like, just kind of going with the flow, you know, and just, I guess I was doing a lot of drugs. <laughs> I guess they going with the flow. I was just partying, you know, I was young. Shit, 17. Shit, man, like, you know, so, you know, when I used to party with my boss, Donato, uh, it would go for, for days, sometimes even weeks. And today I'm gonna talk about that, that time that it went. It went for almost two weeks. Um, you know, I started on a, on a visiting day and that day uh, I got a large amount of money set. I think it was like, I want to say like four grand, five, five thousand. I, I went and I, I paid my boss off the money that that I owed him. He was like, "Man, you're fucking loaded. You know what do you want?" And um, I was like, "You know, give me two, 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 two pesados. You know, two heavy ones. It's a, it's a gram over there, and it was 150 pesos." So I started. It was early in visitation on on Thursday, and you you, you know, next thing I know, I'm at his house on Sunday after visitation and we're still going and he was like matching everything that i was like he, he was a little kind of like a little show off like he would always he would always get you hot he would always you know you know be cool and give you some but he would always like talk about how much money he had and he would match everything that we we would put on the table because that motherfucker was crazy man he would put a whole kilo of cocaine on this big ass white plate that he had right and then warm it up with this little torch that he had and then start cutting it and just leave it there as, as we go. And that's what he did that Sunday. Cause you know, I kept on, I kept on buying and buying and buying and we were like, we already had been Thursday, Friday, Saturday, it was Sunday. And we had already been getting down for a minute drinking. Um, they had this liquor in there, it's called Turbo. That's made out of fucking rice and drinking all kinds of shit. And then so he popped the whole thing out, put it on the plate, put it on there. We started doing it. We ran out of liquor, so then we had to go get liquor. Oh my God, man. When I say that I did the most drugs over there and pretty much made it to the point, just thinking about it makes me want to throw up. Yeah. Next thing you know, man, it was already Thursday. It had been one week. We had already been nonstop. We weren't even sleeping. We were taking like little naps 
I mean, I want to say like power naps, 20 minutes here and there, but we were just drinking, doing coke. We would eat here and there. Um, we had the musicals there, and, and they were yacked out. They were singing really fast. <laughs> well, it got to the point, man, where I, I couldn't even... I couldn't even feel my face. I couldn't feel my hands. I started to feel like really weird, like my body was like trying to shut down or something. And I was like, fuck that, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that I'm gonna go to the bathroom and then I'm just gonna like go to my cell, you know, lock the door and just not be bothered no more. Cause you could do that over there in the Mexican prison. You could actually lock your cell, have somebody from the outside lock it so nobody disturbs you, you know what I mean? Or lock it from the inside, however you want it. So I went back to my cell, laid down. Two of his workers get there and they wake me up. And they're like, hey, you know, Donato wants you back at, at the cell, man, come on. He, he's, you know, he don't, you know, he doesn't like to party with too many people. And I was like, fuck, I'm tired, man. Like, I, I couldn't, I felt like I couldn't take it no more. And they were like, well, just jump in the shower. And they wait there for me right there. So I like, I fucking, I felt like I had to go. <laughs> I did have to go. <laughs> so I get there, you know, and Donato was a cool motherfucker, you know. You just had to be careful because motherfucker had power and he, he could hurt you. So, you know, you didn't want to piss him off either. So I get there and I'm like, what's up, man? And he's like, come on, you don't want to party with me, pollito? What's up? And I was like, yeah, yeah. So we started doing it again and started partying and... More days started passing by, man. And the last day, the very last day before, like, I went and I hid in another cell, in another unit, with different kind of people that they didn't even know. Everything, like, I left and I hid over there. I felt like my heart was gonna come out of my chest. I, I felt like, I felt like I was gonna die, for real. I'm not gonna lie. I took my shirt off and I wrapped it around my chest and I put a, a wood, a piece of wood, like a, a broom handle around it and I started turning it to make sure that my, my chest was locked in. <laughs> Cause I felt like my heart was gonna come out of my chest. <sighs> so I started turning it, turning it. <laughs> I forgot what those are called in the military when you have to like take the blood from an area. But I'm sitting there turning it, right? And his fucking workers get there. And they're like, yo, Donato's looking for you. And I'm like, fuck, man. You know, I would love to see, like I used to always think, you know, like the drug addicts run the streets and they're always wanting to get high and they're like willing to do anything. I guarantee you one of these drug addicts would not last a fucking week with the amount of drugs and party that we did over there in the prison. So they take me back. <laughs> I get back. I'm fucking, you know, doing some lines again, drinking a little bit. I'm trying to, I remember, I was trying to eat this tortilla just to get a little bit of something in me because I felt, I felt fucking horrible, horrible. And I'll never forget, I got, I got up to stand up to go to the bathroom and I just fell out. Straight down. After that, I just remember waking up in the in the hospital over there, and I had a really really bad case of alcohol poisoning, and the coke was fine. <laughs> it's the alcohol that got me. <laughs> but uh, there was uh, three of the guys that were with us that night. They also went. They also ended up in the hospital. Uh, they were like right next to me and they were from they were from Oaxaca and uh, Chupacabras and, and Neto and, and another dude and they were sitting on uh, laying down next to me on on the bed The guy that was right next to me all night all night He was praying to the Virgin Mary to make please make it go away. This is how hungover we were He was throwing up every like five minutes and was crying and praying to the Virgin Mary. I mean, I felt, I felt fucking horrible. I felt sick as a fucking dog. I had diarrhea. I mean, you guys know when you're hungover, you're, you're, you're a mess. I promise I would never do it again. Cause that's how bad I felt. Ask me if I ever did it again. Yes. 
because that's what addicts do. They expect a different result of doing the same shit over and over again. And when they got those cuffs on or they're, anything goes wrong according to plan, then you know it's everybody else's fault. Nah, it's yours. You know, and this is why it's so important for me to tell my stories, to tell everything, because I know there's a million JCs out there with the same story. And if I could do it, you could do it. Because you can't do nothing about your mistakes, man. You can't do nothing about what happened to you as a kid. You can't. All that matters is what you do from this day on. That's it. And you could be a different man. You don't have to get stuck calling yourself a felon or deadbeat dad or, or this or that. If you were, you were. Fix it. That's all you have to do is fix it. Fix it. And those two years that you lived doing right will outlive the 10 years that you did doing bad. All right? But I don't know shit. I'm just JC. I am wrong strong. Hey, don't judge nobody. Stay in your lane. Live savage. And remember, you only have one life to live. Live it out here free, not gang banging, not getting high, doing what's right. Because at the end of the day, it's free. I'll catch you guys on the rebound.